to Camilla Singh Show. And from now on, I want to admit the land I am standing on, we are recording from, is a Squamish, Quatland, and Silvertooth. So this is the land we need to acknowledge, and I want to acknowledge that moving forward, that this is the people, these are the people, or, or the Aboriginal people have allowed me and everybody that's in here to be share the land with them. So that's acknowledgement I want to make today. And I want to carry them with me and with the rest of the people that I come in contact with. So having said that, today we have two beautiful guests in our studios. Oh, Dimple Kukonni Janta. Dimple Saran is a very popular with all the media and the community work that she does in the community. So if you want something done, this is the woman to be doing it. But today we are with One Voice Canada, and she started One Voice Canada in 2018, I think, or 2019, somewhere out there, and she can clarify if I'm wrong. And with her is another director. Her name is Nimrta Kaur. She's the director of OVC, One Voice Canada. So we're going to be talking about a lot of issues since we have last spoken about the international students, about everything in general. So welcome both the ladies for coming in this beautiful afternoon, come and talking to our viewers, our audience. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us, Camilla. It's always a pleasure being on your show. Always pleasure is always mine for you to bring because you <laughs> have wealth of knowledge. And Nimrita is kind of new in this field, but if you are with the right person, she is going to train you well. Yeah. So you I'm don't have to worry hands, about it. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to talk a little bit about everything. But what I want to talk about, I have been reading over and over and over again that international or maybe a One Voice Canada is raising funds to send the body back home to Punjab. And these are international students that have come in here and they have drowned. And so far, just this year alone, we have about 49 deaths already. And we are not in August and September. Summer is not over yet. So let's talk a little bit about why is that? Why are the people do they think that they know how to swim? What happens here? Right. So uh, definitely, Camilla, um, you know, when students come from um, different parts of the world, they don't recognize, they're not familiar with the lands here. They're not familiar with the water here. They're not, they, they treat it like it's back home. Um, every part of the ocean is different. Every part of lakes is different. Uh, secondly, it also depends on lifestyle, culture. Do they know swimming? Do they not know swimming? What have they learned prior to coming here? Are they influenced by friends? Once they're here, they see friends in the water, they want to jump in with them. Are they influenced under the you know drugs and alcohol? Because we all know youth can tend to get into drugs and alcohol, that's another problem. Is there proper signage around where they're swimming? Um, are they aware that they should be wearing life jackets in deeper waters? Um, so all of this becomes factors. Um, how much knowledge and awareness they have themselves prior to getting into water about how deep water can be, how the currents work, shallow current or, you know, water tides underneath. Um, so it's all related. And uh, you are part of One Voice Canada. When did you join One Voice? Are you also an international student? Yeah, I was an international <laughs> student, so I came back in 2018. And uh, I guess I joined around 2019 okay. when I myself was encountered with some kind of problem. Okay. And uh, there was one director at that time with OVC, so we connected through Instagram. And then he recommended me, uh, we can help you out because I was like going through some mental stress and things like that. So um, they helped me out and then I realized that there is a need for international students to come forward to help others. So I was very much interested in joining One Voice. So my background is from computers. So I was initially handling the back end kind of one voice, but then eventually, like everybody recognized that I was doing 
um, things for One Voice, and they um, nominated me for being a director. And I'm really grateful uh, to all of them that they have recognized it and really appreciate what One Voice is doing and will be doing in the near future. So yeah, myself was an international student, and on the topic that you uh, raised about the uh, the recent death uh, that the international student drowned, um, it's really heart rendering to see news like these because uh, I I can see where he was coming from and what aspirations and what dreams he might have had uh, in regards with his life in Canada or his what life he would have dreamt of for his family and parents back home but like all of that went away in just a Moments. flick Seconds, of time yeah. right mm -hmm. and it's it's really really very sad to hear about that um, I wish people would recognize this thing that if you, you do not know swimming or even if you know swimming uh, you are not aware of the surroundings you do not know as uh, Dupinda Panji uh, explained that you do not know the water bodies, you do not know the water bed. It's really difficult to sometimes manage the situations and uh, yeah, I guess people should recognize this thing that you need to be aware of the surroundings, the rules and regulations and everything. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a very sad thing. <coughs> Thank yeah. you for sharing your story and there are so many people that are watching you today and there could be students out there that can need some support. So this is a beautiful organization that support the international. This is the only body that support the international students. No one else does, right? So when you are in a new country, you don't know where to find the housing, where to find a job, yeah. where to go, who can support, who can find resources for you. One Voice Canada has done that. And it has a very good reputation. In the, in the country, might as well. Not just in Metro Vancouver. You have grown all over Canada, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the, the job of the founding member yeah. <laughs> who's sitting just next to you. You are you're learning from the best. Yeah. So the Pindaji or Dimpleji, I think we talked on a little bit about uh, the drowning issue. And I think any time any, anybody just think what happens to the family back home once once they find out what mm -hmm. happened to the their son or daughter, right? Yeah, it's very sad because uh, many of these students, um, they're either the only child um, that we found, you know, um, and all of a sudden the parents are devastated. They've sent their only child out here and now they have no children left. Or they're the only um, female or male child mm -hmm. in the family. And so again, the parents are devastated because they now have lost, you know, a certain gender of their family. Um, it it's really sad, um, more so because many of these families have picked up loans or, know. you know, they've given up their land um, to have their children come here and live their dreams and make something of them. And obviously every child is feeling the same when they come here, when the students come here, it's not like they anticipate that we're going to die or we're going to die in this manner or fashion, whether it be a car accident, whether it be swimming or drowning. However, the safety of it all is very important and that knowledge and awareness needs to be out there. We really have to uh, acknowledge that this country does not give you the proper resources the minute you land at yeah. the airport. You have to learn on your own. And a lot of these children are, or students are not aware of that when they come here. Uh, the minute they land at the airport, they may feel lost. They may not know who to reach out to for certain resources once they're back home or find a housing. Um, a place to live. Uh, they run into other students who they tend to get guidance off of and sometimes that guidance is not always accurate because those students themselves may not know some of the resources out there. So we at One Voice Canada we always you know uh, really make it aware out there that reach out to us or reach out to the government resources that are available. I mean things like HealthLink BC mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, there's lots of other government um, options, community resources. There's many settlement agencies out here who can help you find the resources you need. Mm -hmm. And it's really important, diversity. There's many, many. So, you know, reaching out to those different communities mm -hmm. um, and the resources that the government has or nonprofit organizations out there is very important because you can get the right information. You can help save a life. You can also save your own. And uh, like Namrata said, like if they're not uh, comfortable or don't know the situation at hand, the best thing to do is, you know, follow safety rules. Life jacket is one of the most important things, mm -hmm. whether you know swimming or not. It's very important to wear a life jacket. Um, but what tends to happen is sometimes at that age, we've all been there, you know, at that age, you, you see others not wearing it, then you feel like, oh, I'll look really awkward or different if I wear one, not realizing that you might be the one that drowns and everybody else may not, right? So it's really important to um, notice that instead of uh, being ignorant to those things, that we actually teach each other and say, look, you know what, I'm going to wear one and I think you should too. Right, and, and really putting it out there. So I know our group is um, going to try uh, to reach out, do lots of videos um, mm -hmm. and, and lots of sort of posters around that uh, coming forward. We're working on it right now. We do this annually every year when swimming and uh, summer times and spring time starts to come around. We start putting videos or we start putting information about swimming and the safety around swimming out there. And we're working on some videos right now uh, with Jay Kosa, who is part of our team, mm -hmm. and uh, a police officer himself, and, and uh, really recognizes where students can get themselves in trouble. Yeah. Um, so he's going to be helping out in those videos, which we're really um, appreciative of. Yeah. Yes, I was just thinking about this. So many things were going through my head while we were talking about it. Because I think as a student, it's very hard to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like anybody, whether somebody is giving you something to drink or to smoke or mm -hmm. uh, they say, well, come on, come on, you can jump. But it's okay. I think we all have to learn to say no. If you are not aware about the depth of the river or the lake, just say, I'll be in the water, but I want to stay right here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable. We all might have land back home in Fiji, in China, India, wherever, in small creeks, rivers, lakes, and all that. But you know about that surrounding. But here you don't. Mm -hmm. And because of the heat we are having, we all want to cool down, right? Yeah. But uh, there is nothing wrong with that. You can still cool down, mm -hmm. but always be aware of that. You don't know the depth of that ocean or the lake. Be mindful of that. Right. Wear that vest, you know, that safety vest that you are talking about, life, life jacket. Jackets. Yes. yes. I know it's bulky, not very comfortable, but that is safer than be sorry later on, right? 100%. And also, I would say, Camilla, like um, the surroundings, like you said, the water itself, there's always, you know, tides that can go shallow underneath yeah. and pull you into the water. Yeah. So even if you're thinking this lake is not that deep or it can go knee deep or whatever it is, um, the issue is that I've known swimmers, my own self, who have drowned in water. They know swimming, they know everything, but when that tide comes from underneath and pulls you down, uh, if it's a shallow wave, it's not, um, you, sometimes it's really hard to pull out of there if you don't have a life jacket on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so um, there's been, uh, you know, even expert swimmers who have died from drowning. So we got to recognize these things that it's not uh, just novice or people who don't know how to swim mm -hmm. that can be in danger. It, sometimes it's uh, also people who know how to swim uh, being uh, really aware of which waters you're in is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nimirta, I was going to ask you that since 2019, we are in pandemic for last 18, 19 months. There has not been international students coming in here. The schools are under lock, not lockdown, but people are still studying, but they are doing from home and things like that. And the students that are already here, there is no guidance. There is no support from the government. There is no, nothing else. How do you know those? Do you have any issue how they are surviving? Or no job, no money, no nothing, no schooling, except 
when you first come in here, you give this kind of money to the schools as an admission for you to be coming to Canada. Do you have any idea how, what are the situation of the students right now that are living in here? The ones that are not able to come, and some of them went back home and they can't come home now, can't come back. Okay. So um, I, I'd really like to answer that question because uh, my own brother uh, is kind of stuck. Because the QBAC has a kind of hold on the applications and he's been waiting from a year mm -hmm. to come to Canada. So he had applied from a year, but because of the hold, they are not able to come. And c government just says that it's because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that goes on with the government as well. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> apart from that, um, we do have uh, certain um, things listed down on the OVC website that uh, help students to search out for the resources that they need to survive um, in uh, uh, like this pandemic. And apart from that, uh, OVC had also um, um, done a food bank uh, last year uh, uh, in which we gave out free groceries to students who were not able to find work because like most of the works have uh, shut down and they had laid off the people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we, we try at every level to help the students, but we also want them to reach out to us. Uh, we, we try and post everything on social media. So I have uh, <clears throat> like people, because I mostly handle the volunteering kind of mm -hmm. uh, in OVC, so I handle the volunteer orientations. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, people just uh, tell other friends of theirs to join OVC through uh, our volunteer farms mm. and, and uh, the website. So mm. we are trying our level best to help the students uh, in every aspect that we can. Right, and I'll just add on to that. Um, so mental health is a big thing that OVC yeah. helps with. Um, we collaborate with South Asian Youth Mental Health Alliance, and we also collaborate with Moving Forward Family Counseling yeah. Services. Mm -hmm. And so and to answer your question about the colleges and the level of problems that students are facing, mm -hmm. um, many, many students, when they come here, because they can easily be exploited by employers, landlords, um, colleges as well, uh, the private colleges mainly, um, also, they can face sexual harassment or abuse. Also, um, being new to Canada, not knowing the lifestyle culture around here, they sometimes significantly face problems or even financially. So, uh, many students face financial issues here when they come here because they can only work the 20 hours a week. And so there's different levels, like Namrata said, of the type of problem that they might face once they're here. And eventually all that can lead to mental health problems. Mm -hmm. And so just like in Namurtha's case, when she was facing mental health, we, you know, we recognize all students try to um, approach us because we can then refer them to the right resources and get the right help for them. Mm -hmm. uh, mental health is very big in the international student community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, they don't, there's no other support, but there's only organizations. If yes. they don't reach out to you, and your hands are tight, you are not getting any government support or anything to yeah. be able to support them or feed them or house them. So it's all based on the volunteer level. That's, That's right. That's all you guys can do, right? That's right. Because they're international students and they don't fall under the citizens or PR kind of category here, unless you're a settlement agency, you won't get funded for uh, helping, uh, you know, as a nonprofit to these international students. So One Voice Canada has been doing it all out of pocket on their own to help these students. What we're really appreciative of, though, is that all the other organizations we collaborate with, which is many, many at different levels, mm -hmm. um, they are funded through government programs here. So we're able to refer students to them, which makes a little bit easier for our volunteers mm -hmm. um, to keep working and doing the good work that they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. PIX also gets a lot of funding, some funding from the government, and I think they also help out and That's you, right. Yeah. Like PIX, um, we, we've collaborated with PIX at one point. We've um, also collaborated with Options and yeah. um, 
uh, even moving forward family, like I said, South Asian Youth Mental mm -hmm. Health, um, Kalsa Aid, uh, Guru Nanak Free Kitchen, um, yourself, like on the media, and we're, we've collaborated with a lot of media, which has helped out greatly because um, when people hear about their stories, they reach out to us and mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm willing to help, where can I help? Mm -hmm. So other organizations have collaborated with us through uh, knowing about One Voice Through Media, which has been, we're really grateful. So a lot of the work that we do is uh, we help students find the right resources and where to turn to, and we also do case handling ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we handle a lot of cases ourselves, um, meaning we have uh, 50 advisors on board mm -hmm. who are different professionals. They're counselors, nurses, police officers, immigration consultants who are doing the right thing and mm -hmm. not exploiting children, um, and also... Um, uh, many others who are on board with us at the professional level, uh, lawyers giving advice, mm -hmm. pro bono, so that the students are able to live here and uh, successfully um, fulfill their dreams. Yeah. Nimanta is going to ask you, those people that are you watching you today, because all our shows also, not just because a lot of people say, oh, I don't have no shah, and maybe you are not able to watch, but we also put our show all the shows that we record here on YouTube. So a lot of people can go in, watch anytime. Mm -hmm. So those people, they are international students. They are struggling. They don't know who to reach out. They don't have no jobs, no food. And if you don't have no jobs, they don't have any status in the country. They can't apply for EI. They cannot go to any government agencies and asking for any help or something. They, if there is anybody I was looking at that got really got to the other end of the thing was international students. And we have, we have so many. Somebody was saying 500,000 international students are in Canada right now, scattered all over different cities and all that. They paid a lot of money, or the families have paid a lot of money. Like you say, people have taken loan, sold their land, borrowed money to send the kid to Canada to make sure they have proper education. And once they are settled down, have a PR and be able to get their family in here so they can start life all over again. But just because of the pandemic and not being able to do that, they are the ones that suffer the most right now. That's what I see. Am I right in yeah. saying that? I would agree, yeah. And I'll let Namrata answer that. Uh, yeah, I guess uh, uh, international students are suffering a lot because of this pandemic. Uh, because, as you know, the applications just start a year before or six months before, and this was like all of a sudden, and everything got on hold. And it's it it there is no uh, uh, no notification. I won't say n n no notification, but very little advice from the government itself uh, if they are going to open it to the international students because the bans on the flights they are yeah. just extending right every month they extend the ban fl uh, the flight uh, bans and uh, people are stuck here they cannot go back i myself was planning to go back last year but i've been stuck here because of the flight bans it it is for the good as well because the pandemic doesn't get uh, spread out but uh, government should come out with some sort of solution so there is a relief for international students uh, uh, yeah, to continue with their studies here. Like if they have applied, so they should be able to come here, right? Mm -hmm. So there should be some relief from the government, I guess. Yeah, and just to add to that, like students who had already gone back prior to the pandemic just for a short visit at home got stuck on the other side and then, you know, online schooling or whatever it is is very difficult for them. Initially, there was nothing put in place and then it was put in place, but, you know, uh, and then there's students who are coming and using, um, because the international flight ban was happening for direct flights, mm -hmm. there were students using other countries to come here as a connecting flight and some of them got caught up in those countries without notice mm -hmm. um, and had to actually delay their flights from there to come to Canada. So it's really caused a lot of um, uh, havoc for these students. And on top of that, they have minimal support on this side, like mm -hmm. through the colleges or government. Um, you know, they, they needed a lot more support than what they received mm -hmm. throughout this pandemic. And a lot of nonprofits really stepped up to help them out, mm -hmm. which, uh, uh, you know, we're all grateful for. 
um, a lot of nonprofit organizations are now forming around international students as well, even after One Voice Canada. We were the initial ones in in BC and Canada here, and then since then we've we've had some more um, uh, sort of fortunate times that more international students are uh, now forming their own organizations to help each other out, which is great. Yeah. That's wonderful. So we are sort of running out of time. So what message do you have? I, Dimple, I want you to highlight a little bit about, I know that we all can go and you can lose your life and it's the people that you are leaving behind they are not going to be the same, the people or the parents or the family back home, things like that. So no. always be mindful of what risk we take or they take and uh, giving so much anxiety and pain to the people that are left behind. That's right. I think for the students themselves, I would say, you know, really be careful and be aware of what you're entering, where you're going, what's around you, what environments you're in, what you're getting yourself into, and what kind of support service you have. Because if you get caught up into something that is not, uh, you know, right for you and you're in some sort of problem or trouble or even drowning, like we have mentioned, mm -hmm. um, you're leaving a family behind that's broken. We've done many candle vigils here right. and we don't want to be doing more. You yes. know, we really want these students to step up and take accountability, mm -hmm. uh, be responsible. If you don't know something, learn about it before you go do it. Um, swimming lessons are always available for students if they want to mm -hmm. learn swimming. Uh, you can take them at the nearest recreation center. Signage, always be careful of what what's around, what kind of signs are around where you're entering water. Um, even when it comes to anything else in your life, please learn and make yourself aware and then reach out to organizations if you don't know what to do. Thank you. 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just uh, agree with uh, the with Benji that oh, yeah. reach out to organizations, reach out to us. We are more than willing to help international students mm -hmm. get all the resources that they need. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This is all the time we have for Camilla Singh Street show today and hope you can give us a feedback and keep watching Camilla Singh show.